I started my game, like most players, at the beginning and oh boy, can I tell you, I spent a whole lot of time in the character creation. Of course, as your average gamer, I made my character female. The first thing I experimented with was the hair. And I finally decided on a messy low bun. And no, I definitely did not ask ChatGPT what the kind of hair that is. Then I made my hair bright blonde as foundation and had light rose, blue and darker purple hair strands. I went for golden eyes with light eyeliner and light eye shadow. Then I also made half of my face blood splattered, just to give it that final touch. After I discovered the crazy good physics and- What have they done? They shouldn't give players the options to increase the size of the boobs. And if you ask how much I experimented with that feature, the short answer is yes, and the long answer is yeah. After I was done with my character creation, the game jumped right into this cutscene with a transmission smoother than a baby's ass. Liquid nitrogen, negative 195.79 that was Celsius. I appear to be in some kind of research lab with this researcher reading my stats. Reading that I neither have movement nor brain function. Dagger still stuck in the sheath. Inspection 481 complete. What's that? Secure me, breach. Secure me, breach. I wake up to find a knife in my belly that leaves no wound after putting it out. And a med kit that luckily dropped in the exact right position for me saves my life after I collapsed on the ground. I find the body of one of the researchers on the floor and he has a note with him telling me a tiny part of my backstory. You can find these notes all over the game and each time they will tell you a small part of your story and the story of the game. One of these notes also includes a password that I need to get out of where I am and where the fuck did I pull that card from? Huh? It's true after all. Women really have infinite bags in their, um, well, private spaces. Where the fuck did I After go? opening the door, I find a backpack floating in the air and with myself wearing it. But I also just entered. How can I enter a room and already be in the room that I entered? Or to put it differently, how can it, well, me, turn around and face me or it? And why did it or I disappear? Who, who am I? And how many? What the shit just happened? After being done having an identity crisis, I was about to leave when this, well, hmm, <laughs> strange bird <coughs> stopped me. And now I present you how socially awkward I am. Other face. I thought I was on my own. And you're a metahuman too. I don't know who you are. But I know what you are. Do you remember who you are? It seems that our interests are aligned, MetaHuman. I came to secure a deviation. A paper butterfly. But I think something must have scared it. I can show you the way out of this place, but only if you help me complete my mission first. That was the most one-sided conversation. God damn. Whee! 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 Cool! Whee! Yeah. Deviants are the zombies of this game. They are created when humans get infected with stardust. But I am a metahuman. I should be fine. I want to say, this is not a storytelling video on how all this shit with the Starfall happened. I'm by far not an expert and know far too little about the lore of one's human to give any good recreational video on it. That means I will rarely mention the lore except maybe telling you that this or that has to do something with the story. This is much rather a t retelling of my first hours in Once Human, with a few humorous parts here and there. But right here I will talk shortly about the lore and this girl. These horographic like images are windows where I can see into the past. The girl is Mizuko, who appears to be in some way responsible for the Starfall. And the guy is Victor Hammett, who has some kind of plan for which he needs Mizuko. Mizuko also created the deviations, or at least a few of them. I will talk about the deviations later, more importantly is that Hamid wants to fight the evolutionists and he needs Mizuku for that. We need something powerful to challenge Engaged. the evolutionists, but I think I finally found it. You, this is why we'll fight. I also appear to be force sensitive since I can pick up certain objects by just stretching out my hand. For example the head of this Anemia Deviant. Anemia Deviants are the type to drop me Anemia weapons which I can use with the force. Huh. 
Okay. That later it came sooner than I expected because now it's time to talk about the deviations. Deviations are not the same as deviants, although they are related in some way. They're more like of some kind of Pokemon that you can find all around the world. You can try to collect them, but it seems to be entirely luck dependent if you get one or not. Of course, there are rarer ones and more common ones. Naturally, the rarer ones are harder to get than the common ones. The backpack I got is exactly for those deviations. It can carry exactly one of them with me. If I have more, I'd have to store them in a certain container. Before talking to Mitsuko, I looted the whole place because I don't give a shit about someone's former belongings because there are no mine. You made it back. You're still alive. Yes, and look what I found. A meta. Only just woken up. They, were they introduced me to more of the lore and the mechanics of the game, of which the most important one is this. <coughs> Isolated securement unit. I definitely didn't choke on that word several times. I can put deviations into this glass run showcase so they can rest and regenerate. Fittingly, I got attacked by Siren Head's little brother, Antenna Head. And a few satisfying headshots later, he was dead. As if the game wanted to tell me, no, uh that was too easy for you, it didn't give me the deviation. But that could also be scripted. That's one way to travel. Then I got teleported right into the open world. Yes, that's right. The main game takes place in a giant open world with plenty of other players who have different progressions as you do. But first I had to claim a piece of land. I was supposed to build a little base here, but I never got past the foundation because I was missing the blueprints for anything else than a wall. That's where I thought, nah. If I'm going to invest time to this, I'm going to do it properly. Which just means I'm going to wait until I have more blueprints. Which doesn't mean I was being lazy. I explored the surrounding area, found messages of other players, which were kinda similar to Elden Ring's messages, and did some... Hard work, work! Hard work, work! Hard work, that's what they say! Hard work, work! Hard work, I earn my pay! Hard work! After one and a half hours, I finally found the skill tree. It divides into several categories which are infrastructure, crafting, logistic and building. To upgrade I need Cypher, which I earn by leveling up. To level up I have to earn XP, which I get by looting, doing, Hard work, work. killing deviants, killing bigger deviants, killing deviant bosses and basically every other action I do. I can invest the Cypher into several different categories. For example I unlocked the furnace from the infrastructure category, which allowed me to build a furnace. I will need that furnace to melt down ores I can mine from rock piles scattered around the world. The crafting category allows me to increase the amount of craftable items, such as better ammunition, better gear, etc. The logistic category increases the logistic by giving me access to air drying, rainwater collection systems, composting and so on. The last category is the building category, and it simply increases the amount of different structures I have. After that I went and progressed the story a bit further, by following the beautiful little butterflies. First I had to loot these crates, which the game really doesn't need to tell me. And then I stumbled across this unfriendly woman which I greeted with an equally unfriendly silence. Hands off my stuff. She clearly has bad eyesight, otherwise she would see the crossbow in my hand and instead of saying I'm quite cocky for someone unarmed. And I'm quite sure I can raise my crossbow faster than she can pull her gun out. Not that I think someone with bad eyesight should have a firearm in the first place, but out here there are different rules. And at least she gave me a blueprint for the gun. Turns out she's also a mayfly. I didn't know those could come with bad eyesight, but sure. She's just a researcher instead of capturing deviations like I do. But since we are both mayflies, we decided to help each other out and investigate a deviation that causes problems. Before that I went hunting and stumbled across an abandoned town. 
I explored a bit and listened to this satisfying headshot sound. I also stumbled across this walking boss thingy. What I thought to be a normal enemy turned out to be a normal enemy. But I still needed three times to figure out that I couldn't kill it. Instead I have to knock it out and climb inside to get the loot out of him. Back home, I finally made a firearm. First a double barrel shotgun and then a pistol. V explains that a teleportation tower near Deadsville was activated. I already stumbled over one teleportation tower and activated it myself. In Deadsville, I meet Mary again, which told me that the teleportation towers could also be used to travel between worlds. She also sent me to investigate the merchant if she knew anything useful. Why do characters always appear to be disabled or not able to ask themselves? Like, she was there already and instead of waiting for me, she could have just asked the merchant herself. What if I didn't follow the story and explore the world on my own 10 more hours? Anyway, the merchant, Claire is her name, said that she sent a team to the Rotten Manor that didn't come back yet. And of course it was my task to bring them back. To make my traveling easier, Mary gifted me a bike, which I directly drove into bits and pieces. A neat little detail they added is that when you're driving, you can hear a propaganda channel of Rosetta. That is the same company that experimented on me. And if they didn't talk about how bad the Mayflies are, they played some beautiful classical music. Once arriving at the Rotten Manor, I found the remains of Claire's team. They were covered with some kind of amber looking substance. And the reason for that got clear very quickly, as out of nowhere the shadow or duplicate of the ravenous hunter appeared, and he even had a rotary cannon. But there really was no challenge to that, since all he could do was shoot his gun at me, and then pause for me to shoot him. How kind of him. I met up with Mary again, and she was saying something about the gun doing me good services, even though I never used it. We wanted to go into the next dungeon together, but arriving there, there was no trace of her. Pfft, but who needs help anyway? I slaughtered, looted, and exploded my way through the first Legacy dungeon. I tried out my new shotgun and it packed quite a punch. It could do more than 250 damage on non-headshots. My crossbow did 217 on non-headshots. Of course, the crossbow still was the better option at range. I call these Lamp Deviants Screamers. When they detect you, they scream and alert the other deviants. <laughs> and can we talk about how funny I walk when using the force? I'm tiptoeing all around the place and look like I need to take a shit or something, oh my. I also found this other big dude, who has a very thick skin, but to his misfortune his weak spots were quite visible. He also spews these red glibly things at me, but being a god gamer I am, I dodge them all. Now that I'm finally in the main complex, I want to explore and loot the place before continuing the story. You never know, if maybe the loot starts running away or something like that. I stumbled across this red floating orb and it led me right to the boss of the area. Even without their submission. The Ravenous Hunter is the first boss you fight when you follow the story. The attacks are similar to when you fight them as their duplicate, but it's more diverse. But it's still just the same hide and shoot fight it was the first time. However, once you get them down to half HP, their gun explodes and they're standing there for some good 20 seconds before they transform their armor into a fucking RPG, are you kidding me? And then it's back to the hide and shoot game fight until they flee up to the walkway in the back and become invulnerable. I have to destroy the two spawners that spawn left and right of the arena. These spawn little deviants. Sadly, the spawners are taken care of fairly easy since there are conveniently placed explosive barrels right next to them, which take them out one shot. 
A cool feature they added is that you can pick up the rotary gun the hunter dropped and use it as long as it has ammo. Which deals the same damage as a pistol but with an insanely high fire rate. After its death I collected all the loot and this time the game allowed me to catch the deviation. I then went and talked to Mary, which sent me to the boss I just defeated. I however skipped that and went straight to Mythico. She praised me on how well I did, but she also mentioned that we had to shut down 5 more of these. The game weirdly went into her loading screen mid cutscene and didn't leave time for me to hear the rest. You may have noticed the black mist growing bigger in my HP bar. That's a pollution of stardust that happens when I'm in heavily polluted areas. I can get rid of that bar by sleeping. Although, I wouldn't call that sleeping since I don't have my eyes closed. I also always do the same sleeping animation, which looks quite funny. I only wish that they make sleeping more interesting by firstly closing the eyes, secondly giving me a fucking blanket, who, who sleeps without a blanket, Jesus Christ, and thirdly making more resting animation, for example rolling to the other side or something like that. Then I continued the story by talking to various different characters and heading to the next location where people are turned into perfectly, perfectly healthy, healthy trees. Me. I enjoyed some more nice classical music and saw a beautiful rainbow. Once arriving at the hideout, I got sent to some sort of parallel universe where I had to fight the shadow of the trend. To make him vulnerable, I had to first destroy these root-like entities. I also got some more lore of this world. It revolved about a girl being exiled from a group because she possessed some sort of prayer book that prayed to one of the great ones. My first sword of death also happened here, but due to some good adrenaline shot, I stood back up and gunned him down. To fight the next boss I had to do the exact same shit as the first time, meaning activating 4 rift anchors, then I fought my way through the dungeon, this time fighting Rosetta soldiers instead of deviations, and looted the entire place empty. That's also how I finally found my first pants, because I was too stingy to craft them myself. Now to the actual boss, Trent, big dude. <laughs> oh, damn, he looks epic, damn, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, yes. And honestly, I'm quite disappointed in this fight. Don't get me wrong, the boss is still great, but there are things that I'd like to point out. That is, that the fight isn't really difficult. As already with his shadow, I first had to kill the roots to get the boss vulnerable for 2 minutes or 120 seconds or 120,000 milliseconds or 0.0013888 days. I think that that time window is way too generous. One minute would have been enough. Because even with my piss poor damage, I still had enough time to dump several magazines into him and destroy the projectiles he fired at me. I don't know what kind of level I was supposed to be, but I was the exact same level when I fought the Ravenous Hunter. And when you now think at the kind of damage you can do when you explore a lot and upgrade much more than I did, or fight him with other players, yes you can do that, you see the point. He would be dead so quickly. I'm actually happy with the amount of roots you have to destroy and the amount of HP these have. I also like the little minions that can spawn around the arena and attack you from behind. They gave me quite the heart attack the first time. But I think the boss has not enough range attacks. Since the game encourages you to fight at range with basically forcing you to craft the crossbow and the pistol, 
It would have been nice to see more range attacks or a distance closing attack that forces you into melee range. The span of the range attacks the boss has is very limited, as in exactly two. Yes, two attacks. The first one being these orbs he spawns, and the second one being this super laser. None of these attacks are any real danger to you, since you can literally shoot the orbs out of the sky and the windup of the super laser is so long that it didn't take a lot of skill to dodge it. Also, a second phase would have been nice because I didn't experience anything like that in my fight. Also, when the 2 minute timer ran out a second time, it didn't make him invulnerable again. The fight just continued. Now, I don't know if the my fight was bugged or something, so it could have been just that. I also completely forgot to use the deviation I was carrying with me, which have made it even easier. Second phase now. If you take away the very good boss music, you actually notice how repetitive the fight actually is. Pew 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 pew. Now, one last thing. Even though I gave a lot of criticism, I still enjoyed the fight. Yes, you can't criticize something and still like it. The atmosphere is good, the introduction cutscene is good, and the visual design is phenomenal. Final cycle, I think. I'm gonna kill him now, maybe? Mm. Easy. I was again able to capture the deviation and also get some more lore from Mizuko. I'm not sure. It was honestly very boring. Just standing there, shooting either the bullets, dodging his super laser or shooting the like riding person. Mm, the boss music was also too much, to be honest. Ho oh, ho ho, excuse? What? Before I conclude this video, I want to talk a little more about the deviation I captured. The first one being the standard butterfly. She can attack in two modes. In the first mode she attacks the target closest to her, which works okay-ish. Not really though. She appears to attack the closest target and after that either just flies frozen in time or takes ages to attack the next target. The second and more useful mode is that she is going to attack the target you're looking at. The second deviation is this cute little slimy thingy which can transform into a wall. And the most recent one I can't even synchronize with. It just produces these hard vines. Well, I don't know how useful that is, so... It's cool, I guess. I never say no to free loot, however. There are these really funny emotes. I can be coy. I can flirt if I want something. I can reject someone if they flirt with me. I can be happy. I can sneak away if the situation is really bad and I don't want to handle it. And I will bow if I get the applause I deserve. As a final note, I want to say, this game is completely free. It will not cost you a single dime, so if you are unsure if you want to play it or not, just give it a try. Just don't install it from Steam. I did that and I was never able to play because the game kept crashing, until I installed it from their official launcher. And also, of course they're going to try to get money out of you with a battle pass and cosmetic you have to pay real money for. But that's all not necessary for the game's progression and not necessary to have fun in the game. What? Are you waiting for an outro? Be gone already. Go watch one of my other videos instead of lingering around here. <laughs>